every line. So for INTJ is equal to z zero, this is the height portion, and then this is the width portion. We want to do the height. We want to do the width first. So line one, character one. Line one, character two. Line one, character three. And then we go to line two, character one. Line two, character two. Line two, character three. So we do the width first, and then the height. And then we set char c is equal to lines from file. Now lines from file is a list. So we get that by passing the index of the line we want to look at. Of course, when we're first starting, we want the line, the first line, which is at index, index zero. All right. Now that returns a string. So this is all a string. The bracket i is from the string level. The bracket i tells us to look at that character. So we get the whole line, but look at that character. And we can actually speed this up a little bit. If we have string line is equal to lines from file bracket j, we do not have to look at it every time. So now we just look at line here. Oh, and there's two lines here. Oh, let's say L. L. Okay. All right. So that will speed it up a little bit since we don't have to keep on getting into that uh, list here. It will store it in string L. So character C is L. The uh, index, the character index at I. So let's say it's the first line and we want to look at the third character. It will return this. That right there is what it will return. That's what the bracket I does. We have the first line in L. Now the bracket I will tell us to look for if I is zero, it will return this. If I is one, it will return this. If I is 30, it will return this. Or 2, sorry. If I is 2, it will return this. If it's 3, it will return this. And all the way, if it's 19, it will return this. So now we just loop through, populate the tiles, character array. And when that's done, we set up the map dimensions with width and height. Alright, so we just loaded our file. That's it. We're done. Now, we have an add regions here. Now, I did it as a dictionary it's because it's a lot easier to look to as a, as a list. It does math to hash it to the proper uh, key and stuff like that. Where list, you have to look through the first element in list. Is that equal to this? No. 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 Stuff like that. Okay, so I did it as a dictionary for easier to use and easier to remember. If the list just said uh, dot add region one, add region two, add region three, you don't know what's going on. If you look at the game one that CS, you know. All right, this rectangle is mapped to the character A. This rectangle is mapped to the character B. So it's also easier for us. To see. See, if we just had a list, we wouldn't know that this belongs to A, this belongs to B. Maybe we don't have a C, maybe we have a D, so we just do it that way. It's just a lot easier, I think. You can do it list if you want. I just think it's easier for a dictionary. Alright, of course, we want one region per key, so if it already contains a key, if it does not contain a key, we add it. Otherwise, we added more than one regions, so we just throw a new exception. You can only have one region per key. Alright, so we want to add a background. That's that grungy sky. We just pass it the asset. We have content already ready for us. So background is equal to content.load and texture2d and the asset name. 
All right, so now I have a draw. We're going to draw the whole thing in here. If tile sheet is not equal to null, of course it cannot even draw at all, so it just reports an error. Tile sheet cannot be null. If the regions is equal to zero, we cannot draw at all because it doesn't have anything as a reference. So we throw out another error. This is tile regions must be populated by calling add region. If those two are fine, we can draw our tiles. Now, if background is not equal to null, we draw the background. We don't have to have a background. I can take that out. I can add background and the game will still work. It'll look a little boring, but it'll still work. I can put it back in, and now we have a background. All right. So that's why it tests if it's not null, it'll draw it. If it is null, it won't. So now we draw the tiles. Now we need another four, two four loops. If it's an empty tile, do not draw it. If it's not an empty tile, we're going to draw it. All right, so now this is where the draw comes in. We pass it the tile sheet. Remember, the tile sheet has both A and B in it, so we need to have a rectangle as a reference. That's what we built with the, uh, oh, where is it? That's what we built with the add regions, the referencing. Now we need a position. Remember, the tile width and tile height go here. Of course, we can change that with the uh, tile dimensions we have here, and it'll still be the same. Tile dimensions. So that way it's not built into the program. So tile dimensions dot x for width times i we'll get to that in a few minutes tile dimensions dot y which is height we press f5 and it's still the same and of course there's my aaa stuff that i worked on before but that's okay all right so what we're doing here is since every tile has a width of 36 we want to multiply that by the current index of the line. Now the first index is zero, so the first tile should be in position zero, zero. Now this is, remember my first tutorial a while back, one of my first few tutorials, I talked about the, using the origin. This is where you need to be careful. If you have the origin left as default, the origin is the top left corner of the window, right here, where my mouse is, where the Visual Studio logo is. It's right up there is where the origin is. So the full width is 30, four, full width is 64, yeah, 64, and the full height is 36. It's a, if the origin is in the center, it's just a lot more complicated to do, I think. So I just left it as a default. I'll watch my origin tutorial and you'll see what I'm talking about. You have to do corrections. So it'll be drawing zero zero as a center, so you get like the the uh, bottom right. You split the texture into fours. You get the bottom right portion of that if it's in the center. So you got to auto. You got to correct it to fill the entire thing. All right, enough about that. So we have the x, the dimensions, which in this case it's sixty four as a width. So sixty four times i. All right, I is zero in this case. So it's gonna be zero, zero. The tile's gonna be zero, zero. The first tile's gonna be at position zero, zero. Then we increment, we go to the next one in the uh, width direction. We do not do height yet. Remember, the inner for loop is width. So go to the next one, which is I is equal to one. 64. So we're putting it right to the next, right next to the first tile. So that's why we multiply it by the uh, four variables here, j and i. Same thing with y, height. We multiply it by j, so it will automatically be positioned right next to the previous one. Now the regions, we get the key, which is just the tile, 
So get that key. And then we give it color.white, which is just default for everything. That's how we draw it. All right, so we're almost done. Let's look at game one at CS really quick and talk about that. Like I said, this is part one. Part two, we're gonna worry about if it's a smaller screen. We'll actually have a character to focus on right now if we just leave it as a default screen here and here. And we'll just cut everything off. So until we have a character on the screen, we can actually move the camera around and stuff like that. So we'll talk about that next tutorial. All right, so we build a map one uh, object, map object called map one. So yeah, you've seen this line before, these two lines. And the initialize we call the constructor. We pass up the content. Now we use path.combine for the map name. We get the content that root directory. And then just the name of the document inside the content project. And that's it. Now we need an asset name for the tile sheet, so we just pass in the asset name. And the dimensions per tile. And the empty character. And then if we call the constructor, we need to add the regions. These two should never change unless you change the dimensions of the tile. These two should never change. It should just be these two. Okay. Then we add the background and we're done. And all we need to do is call sprite batch step again, draw, and we pass the sprite batch, and end. So that's it. That's how we get a complete game from a text document to this by using a tile sheet. All right, that's it for this tutorial. And uh, <clears throat> this was a completely different type of tutorial I've done before. I've never done this before, so it's probably not perfect. But if you prefer this, it's what, 30 minutes? I didn't code once. I changed a few things. I told you what would happen if I did something. So I did type a little bit, but I didn't code that much. So do you prefer it this way? If it's all complete and I don't spend 30 minutes of typing and I go through line by line telling you what it's doing what you should change, what you shouldn't change, stuff like that, just to give you an idea. Or would you rather see it like you have before, where I code from nothing to get the result? So let me know. And of course, for the uh, Complete Games series, I probably will keep on doing that, since that's the whole idea behind it, is you have nothing. No graphics, no audio, no video, no code, nothing. And I tell you how to get the graphics, I tell you how to get the audio, I tell you how to get the video. Or, if you don't want to worry about that, I provide them to you and just tell you how you get to that point. But, for random tutorials like this, do you prefer it if I do it the way I did it here? Or would you rather have me code it? And must type. Quite a few times, like I've done before. So, uh, whichever one you decide, I will probably do... I do like this because I can just walk through line by line. The other way, I have to have the other window open so I can code the same way I have before. And it's also like a comment, line by line comment, like what I did here. So let me know, post on my forums, uh, comment on YouTube, whatever is the only way you can contact me. Send me a message and let me know. Uh, again, this is my first one doing this, so it's probably not perfect. I'll probably miss some things. But, I will get there. We'll get there. So anyway, that's it for this tutorial. Next tutorial, I'm hoping to have a little stick figure character on there. That we can move around. And we'll go from there. See you next time.